Wet with Simeon Corti and Elaine Hill. Welcome along, it's 10,000 gallons of saturated shenanigans. And today's show is full of the biggest, best, wettest games on television. And I'm going to go and check out the first game. And away she goes. But before we meet the teams who are going to be playing today, just have a look at this. Not only do we have thousands of gallons of water here, but check this out. We've only got a shipwreck too. And this is no ordinary shipwreck, no, no. Because on this ship, is the star prize, the big one. You might say, the big kahuna. But only one of our teams will get to search for that treasure, both on deck and in the hidden depths of the harbour wall below. So who will it be searching for that treasure? Let's meet the teams playing Get Wet today. In the orange team, we have Emma and Adam, the Oldham Otters. And for the green team, we have Kerry and Simon, the Plymouth Pirates. So let's give them their first challenge, the big splash. OK, the big splash is a race where the teams are going to be picking up points and lead to big prizes. First of all, they come down this chute, they swim over here to this valve, open it, which operates the water cannon at the other side of the pool. Who's rather difficult? Onto the monkey bars, right along to the end, jumping down onto these huge hamster wheels and working their way across the pool to where Sim is. Well, hopefully, along the way, they will have collected these doubloons. The bronze is worth five points, the silver, ten points, and if they get this far, they get the gold worth 20 points. The problem is, of course, that if the other team beat you here, they can make your life very difficult on those wonder wheels with these babies, the old water cannons. So, 100 points to be gained for each team here, but only two minutes to do it. So, if you're standing by, teams, ready, set, yeah! get ready! Team. The Greens didn't even get to the pontoon. Let's get them up here and see how the points look. Well, a great start to the competition with the Oldham Otters on 70 points and the Plymouth Pirates on 70 points. So, so it couldn't be closer. I mean, we, we at least got to the water cannon. Emma did brilliantly. What went wrong with your lot? Well, just got to show those hamster wheels are a lot more tricky <laughs> than you think. You've got to be a big hamster to make them work, I think. <laughs> well, let's find out what you've won so far and what you can win on today's show. 
Level 1. Get 50 points and you should never be late for that important date with this wizard watch. Level 2. 75 points and you won't have time to be bored with these brilliant board games. Level 3. 100 points and you can step onto the catwalk with this cool designer gear. Level 4. 125 points. Keep track of those special dates with this fantastic digital diary. So, some top prizes to be won, and as you've just seen, you've already each got a groovy watch and plenty more points to be gained in just a moment. OK, now it is time to play Celebrity Secrets, and the celebrity who will be revealing all for us today is weather forecaster and new presenter of How To. Let's hear it for Sean Lloyd. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. So you have some secrets about yourself. I do, which I'm about to reveal. OK, but before you reveal them, let me just tell you how the game works. In Celebrity Secrets, each team nominates a spokesperson. We have Emma for the orange team, and Simon's going to do the talking for the green team. And what we have are a selection of facts about Sean's life, three for each of you. But the problem is, some of them are totally made up. All you have to do is decide which is true and which is false. Every correct answer is worth 10 points, so a possible 30 points for each team. Orange team, you can go first. Are you ready, Emma? Yes. OK, Sean, okay, will you Emma. please reveal your secrets? The first thing I do in the morning is jump out of bed and do five minutes' worth of aerobics. True or false? True. I wish false. Oh. Number two, I have a pet Persian cat called Cyclone. True or false? True. Oh, false. Oh. And question number three. When I was presenting the weather, I spat my chewing gum out. Come on, hurry. True or false? Hurry. True. True! It is oh, true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, at least the orange team got one. OK, Greens, good luck. On your Shan. Right then, Simon, question number one. I won the equivalent of the Weather People's Oscars in Paris in 1993. True or false? False. No, it's true, oh, I did. Well yeah. done, Number two, Jack. the first record I ever bought was Remember You're a Womble. True or false? True. Hurry, come on. True or false? False. No, it's true, oh. I'm ashamed to say. And question number three, I'm a fluent Welsh speaker. True or false? False. True, doing shout out to Cymraeg. I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounded very impressive. So, by my reckoning, I can't believe you bought that Wombles record, Sean, but by my <laughs> reckoning, that means that the scores look something like this. Well, the Plymouth Pirates are still on 70 points, but creeping into the lead, the Oldham Otters with 80. Um, so, the competition is really hotting up. Well done, teams. Sean, I'm going to have to take the next game ready. Great, off you go. Okay. Now, can you stick around, Sean? I'd Char? love to. Reveal please. a few more secrets for us later. Later on. In fact, you might as well stay around and enjoy the action in this next challenge for the teams, the Polar Jigsaw. For this game, we have 12 huge pieces of jigsaw. Six make up a polar bear and six make up a penguin. And all the teams have to do is to get the right pieces pieced together to make the pictures. Simple. And our teams have been beautifully kitted up for the job. You're not going to believe what they look like. Let's hear it, please, for our contestants! <laughs> you look fantastic. You look just brilliant. OK, so you know what you've got to do. Each piece that fits together is worth five points. Six pieces in a jigsaw, so a possible 30 points. If you're standing by, my little Eskimo friends, ready, set, get ready!
Thank you. It's fine. Oh, that was madness, wasn't it? I, I can definitely see some polar bear feet over there. Yep. The green team got three pieces. I can see the penguin's belly. The orange team got two pieces. So let's see how that's affected the scores. Well, Tim, the Pirates have 85 points, but the Otter's still in the lead with 90 points. So, both teams have reached level two, which means both teams have already won the wristwatch and the selection of games. Still to play for, the cool designer gear and the fantastic digital diary. The reason we have sat Adam and Kerry back to back is because we're about to play Celebrity Secrets round two. It has a slight difference in that Sean will read out six facts all about the weather. The thing is, as ever, they could just be made up. What we need you guys to do is give us a true or false, but don't shout out true or false. Put your thumb up if it's true, thumb down if it's false. We'll keep a track of the score. Each correct answer is worth five points, so there's 30 available. Sean, are you ready to reveal your secrets? I am, um, and they are quite tough questions. Okay, the tension is building, guys. So, good luck both. Here goes question number one. Contrails are lines of cloud that are formed from the water vapor emitted by aircraft engines. True or false? And indeed, it is true. Oh. Question number two. A sun pillar is one of the earliest forms of sundials found in the Orkney Isles. True or false? It's false, I'm afraid. Question number three. Hill fog is simply cloud covering the hilltops. True or false? And it's true. Number four. Palm trees can be found in Wigtown, 93 miles south of Glasgow. Is that true or is that false? It's true. Question number five. The largest single hailstone was found in Paris, in the city of Paris in France, on the 14th of April, 1996. Is that true or is it false? It's false. And question number six. Dew point. Dew point is the temperature at which condensation occurs. True or false? It is true. Well. What a nerve-wracking game. The, ten the tension was just incredible. And by my reckoning, the orange team got four out of six, and the green team also got four out of six. So let's see how that is affecting the scoreboard. Ooh, what a nail-biter. Plymouth Pirates on 105 points, but still in the lead, the Otters on 110. This competition is so close. There's one more game to go. Sean, thank you very much for coming in thank you. and I'm revealing really your enjoyed. secrets. You can stick around and watch this if you like. Probably the most important challenge of all because this will decide which team will go on the chest quest. We're about to make our contenders walk the plank. Okay, we have eight magic posts and we have eight planks. And what the teams will have to do is use the planks to cross over the magic posts from that boom to that platform over there. But to make it more difficult, the green team is at the moment on the pontoon and will be spraying the orange team with water. But not to worry because the orange team will get their revenge as we'll be playing this game one team at a time. There's five points for every magic post cross and there's one minute 30 teams to get this done. So if you're ready, orange team, set to get wet! successfully made their way across the first plank, which is, of course, the first problem. And already the green team are booting up those water cannons and trying, trying desperately to put Emma off her balance. This isn't as easy as it looks because it's not just a question of getting the planks in place. You've then got to balance your way across like it's some kind of tightrope. <laughs> and Emma is now within range of the water cannons you can see, life is going to get very difficult for her now, but they have a good system going, the orange team. Is she going to be put off by the force of those water jets? She had a bit of a stumble there, but Adam is still doing very well at handing out the planks. They've got a good system going, good bit of teamwork from the orange team here. Five points for every plank they successfully get across the post. But Emma is really entering a danger zone now, and she's off! Emma now has to swim back and start again from the boom. It was disastrous, the water jet took her out. Go on, Emma, you can do it. Adam, give her a hand, mate. Go on. Adam's decided to take over. He's going to go to the end. Then swap roles. That's a good idea. OK, Adam is now on the third post. He has to get across to post number four. Go on, Adam. Oh, that's 
That's it. Time is up. A brilliant effort by Adam and Emma with four planks in final position for the orange team. The question is, how will the green team do as they walk the plank? Simon's making good progress for the green team, getting across that first plank, and already the second plank is in position. But Adam and Emma for the orange team are making life tricky already with those water cannons. Of course, Simon and Kerry have had the advantage of seeing this done, so they've adopted the same strategy. A bit of teamwork going on here as Kerry hands out the planks, and Simon attempts to make progress, but straight into the path of a water cannon. The green team know exactly how much work they've got to do here. They really have to get more than four planks across the beat within a chance of playing the chess quest at the end of the game. And if Simon can get past this stage, he will have achieved that. Hand me the plank, Kerry, he's saying. Give me the plank. He's got to do a bit of a tightrope walk to get across these slippy planks. It is so wet out there. The water cannons are very powerful. If he can get onto this post without falling off and without destroying the route he's mapped, then I think they're going to be within a chance of playing for that star prize. And the Orange team know that. They are furiously firing those water cannons. Go on, Kerry. Keep handing those planks out. With, with just seconds left, can he hold on and get to... It's the end of the game! A brilliant effort by the green team and at a very significant point in the game as well. While we work out how the points look and get them out of the water, just look at how fast and furious this game was. What we all want to know is how does that affect the final scores. Well, Sim, it's all changed with the Otters on 130 points, but this week's chess questers are the Pirates on 135. It really couldn't have been a closer victory. Just five points in it. It was that last walk the plank that just pipped it for you guys. But they did brilliantly, didn't they? They did very, very well. These games are more tricky than you think. And Orange Team, you're not going to go away with nothing at all. You've won a watch, you've won some box games, sports gear, and in that last game, you won a digital diary. So all you have to do is swim for home. Let's hear it for the Orange Team. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Bye, guys. Right, the final game approaches. Elaine, if yep. you could take Simon and Kerry and get them kitted up because you have to get some scuba gear you on. Sure do. It is time. Off you go then, across the deck if okay. you would. It is time for us to play the chest quest. <laughs> Before I tell you how the game is played, let's have a look at that star prize that Simon and Kerry will each win if they succeed in the chest quest. Put away your pen and paper and plug into the latest technology with this amazing computer with CD-ROM, sound system and a colour printer. Let me explain. Inside this golden chest is that star prize. But because it's such a special prize, we've locked the chest twice. What Simon and Kerry have to do is find two golden keys that will unlock the chest. One from on the deck and one from the murky depths of the harbour wall. Kerry's first key opens the chest where she will find the rods to clear the drain which will flush out the key to the lockers, inside one of which is a mallet. She'll use the mallet to smash open the barrels where she will find a crowbar to prise open the wardrobe inside which she will find her golden key. Down below, Simon's first key will open the chest, where he will find the key to the safe. Inside the safe is the tap to raise the rudder, under which lies the spanner, which will open the pipe. In there lies his golden key. Once they've got their keys here, all they have to do is turn the locks, open the chest, and shabam, the chest quest is complete. Simon is, as we speak, being kitted up in his scuba gear. There he is with Elaine. He's almost ready to go down into the water. And because scuba diving is quite dangerous, we've got our safety divers down in the depths as we speak, just in case any assistance should be needed. And in fact, they are ready now, so let's have a round of applause, please, for Simon and Kerry! <laughs> Looking very 
cool. OK. OK. Elaine, you're going to go down below and just finally check the competition elements, right? OK, Elaine can go down now. Simon's being kitted out. So, Kerry, a top-of-the-range PC at stake here. It's got the sound card, the speakers, the colour printer. How do you feel? I'm a little bit nervous, but I really want the prize. I bet you do. It's a fantastic prize. Well, the tension is building here. You know what you've got to do. You've got to find those golden keys. Simon is almost ready to go under. What I will do is give you each the first key on your route. So there's one for you, Kerry. Simon, there is your first key. That will open your first chest. From then on, it's up to you to find the two golden keys and win that prize. If we're ready, diving supervisor, OK, I think we're all set. We're ready to play the chest quest in five, four, three, two, one. And they're off! Chest, you are now the proud owners of a top notch PC. How do you feel? Brilliant, yeah. How do you feel, Simon? Unbelievable, great. It's a fantastic end to the show. We'll see you at the same time next week for more. Get wrecked, goodbye!